Welcome to the interview here on France 24. Today, my guest is Malak Shabazz, one of the six daughters of the late Dr. Betty Shabazz and Malcolm X, who was assassinated 50 years ago this month. Malak Shabazz is a human rights activist. She is more particularly the UN NGO Human Rights Subcommittee Chair for the Elimination of Discrimination and Racism. She's been invited to Paris by the Representative Council of Black Associations to speak about Malcolm X's legacy, racism, and Reparations for slavery. Thank you so much for joining us today here on France 24, Ms. Shabazz. Um, you were born a few months after your father was assassinated. Um, how did you learn about him? What was his legacy for you? Him being I, such a public figure. Uh, I knew everything about him. My mother, Dr. Betty Shabazz, his partner in, in life. Uh, when he dropped the baton seven, at, after seven years, she picked it up and continued 31 more years and added women and children along the way because regardless, you know, the, we had the separate women's rights movement. They still weren't considered part of it. Uh, and she was prominent in that as far as the women's uh, movement that would go every year. Her last one was with uh, Hillary Clinton in Beijing. Um, but... Uh, I think that uh, she was really his rock, and so she helped continue his legacy, and we spoke of him in present tense, so it wasn't like he was dead. He was, we knew that, but she made us very comfortable. She let us know who he was, his legacy, and, you know, he was daddy, not what everybody was saying that he was. Did that ever clash, those what? images of, of your father as a, as a father figure, even if he was absent for your life, but that clashing maybe with a more public persona that was uh, put out there? Not at all. We thought those people were idiots. They didn't know anything. They, there are people today who don't read, don't do their research, and just listen to what people tell them without finding out for themselves. So we thought they were foolish. And so we didn't care what people said. We just, we just stay away from them and stay with people who cared and loved him and respected him and my mother. And, and 50 years ago, uh, 50 years later, uh, how has that legacy evolved, if at all, for Malcolm X? He is probably one of the most globally known human rights icons of the century, of still, forever, up there with Gandhi. We, we, I'm here in France. Uh, last week, I did a, a human appeal uk.org tour, tw insights to Malcolm X, and it was the pre-5090. And uh, 50 years of his death, 90 years of his birth. Right, right. And they're Islamic, but they're, you know, I'm Islamic. But, Religion has, uh, terrorism has no religion. And so I'm proud to say I'm Islamic, but I'm not like the other ones, but, you know. And uh, I, Scotland, I went to Glasgow. That was the last stop. They're claiming, Mal uh, they claim Malcolm X. Liverpool has two prominent people in Liverpool. Malcolm X and John Lennon. This, I was like, uh, this woman from Guam. So he re he's really a, a global figure, even today. Everywhere. The only yeah. issues anyone has is in the United States. We, uh, well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the United States and Islam, more particularly in the United States. Um, for those viewers that are unaware, uh, Malcolm X was, uh, took uh, Islam as, as a way uh, to sort of offer black Americans or African Americans uh, reclaim their identity that they had been uh, that had been taken away from them um, through slavery but today Islam has sort of a, a, a different connotation it's become less of a black movement and more of an international one yeah well let me just make one correction um, my father wore his religion in his back pocket he didn't push that on anyone because uh, his organization uh, a Muslim, um, a Muslim Brotherhood Inc. He had non-Muslims. He had atheists. Like he said, when you go out there, the lender is not going to ask you if you're a Muslim, Christian, or Jew. They're going to let you because you're black. So you have to. Your religion is yours. 
keep it there. Right now, it's about human rights and saving our people. And uh, he was very much a Muslim, but he was also black. And in this country, that meant something. You know, as far as slavery, racism, the South, the North. Uh, he said the South uh, started at the Canadian border. People didn't think lynching was in the North, but it is. Uh, still slightly going on. And frankly, I don't think things would be this bad if he was still alive. He was uh, an advocate in every country. If he heard about it, he was there. And I think today he would uh, be the Mandela, be the Kofi Annan, who they called on. Um, there's really nobody to do that. Uh, but he, it was his passion to make sure injustice, you know, was heard. How would he react to this uh, religion, if you know, even if he wasn't uh, pushing, he put it in his back pocket, as you say, but um, the fact that this religion is being, um, you know, it, at least in the mainstream media, being sort of equated with radical Islamists and the movements and, uh, and the fight against those radical Islamists that are taking place around the world. Well, that's the irresponsibility of the press, because if they did their their research, that's not true. It's not true. They don't say that about Catholics, Jews, or anybody else. They slap terrorism on Islam, and that's it. Right, but there's, there is the, or, there is the Islamic State organization, for example, that's waging a war in exactly, Syria and Iraq. But, which so. means all Muslims should suffer? No, no, but I'm saying that how, how would he react to, to the growth of I, the Islamist movement worldwide, even I, though for him it was such a peaceful religion? I don't think a lot of these things would be happening if he was alive or for all of those who were assassinated because they were changing. Martin Luther King, Medgar Evers, they were changing people's lives. They made everybody spunk here. Be proud to be black. Be proud to be African American. Be proud to be Chinese American. Be proud to be Italian American. Why? Because everybody was an immigrant here. And they built this country through blood, sweat, and tears. So they are American, but they're African American. They all did it. And they named it America. But they're still African and American. We built it as an American, but I'm still African American. You're Chinese American. The Chinese were killed in the Cooney Rebellion, the Irish, the this. But in the end, their descendants are not going to deny the history of that their relatives built, built this country. They're Americans, yes, they were born here, but they are also, fr their culture is their culture. Do you think that black Americans or uh, African Americans, if you prefer that term, would... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, do you think that life has improved uh, for the lot of them uh, is since your father was assassinated? Do you think that his struggle... Um... Yeah, but I think that the improvement... There's been a lot of improvements. However, with the improvement came complacency. You know, come a long way, baby, type of thing. And then... My generation, the generation before me, they pulled our coattails and they were like, look, this is what we've got to do, because they, they were the first. We were the first. I'm the first. I was born a year after the Civil Rights Act. Only one. Right, maybe nine months. And, uh, you know, probably still isn't really being... In some ways, it's, it's being uh, realized, but my father thought it was simple and that it was just asking for better improvement when human rights says I'm equal to you. So he was, he keeps up calling him civil rights. He, he evolved into a human rights activist and he was constantly, he was Malcolm Little, Malcolm X, then on Hajj Malik Shabazz. My mother was Betty Shabazz, Dr. Betty Shabazz, with two PhDs and six kids, after six kids. Uh, they were part, they were perfect for each other. They were and while they went along the way, they were educating they weren't leaving people behind. My generation left people behind because they got comfortable next. And that next generation got lost somewhere. Just a, a quick word on, um, on the police in the United States today and the brutality that we're seeing continuing against, uh, against individuals um, of African descent in the United States. How, what, what is the way to end that? Is there... Well, we have better movements. And we address it. It's, it. it's better. It's not good. But look at what the dogs and the hoses back in the 60s. Who does that? But they did. Uh, 
At Birmingham. Uh, I think that too often for the past 10 years, they kept saying we're going to have sensitivity training, racial training. I think they all skipped class. They all skipped class, let's be honest. And uh, he'd probably be disappointed if it, because it happened with him, but on a serious level. They're shooting now, but then it was beat. They got beat. Beat down, crack skull. You know, I don't... So the brutality is still there. The brutality is still there. It's just, cha it's just changed, changed weapons. Right. And it's become institutionalized. Well, it's, it's always been institutionalized. However, what the, the irony is, uh, Mr. Lynch, Officer Lynch, who's head of the PBA, uh, B Police Benevolent Association, he's the big maha, uh, had the nerve, two cops were shot in New York and while they were in their car. And all the cops, uh, police officers were crying. They tried to blame uh, de Blas Mayor de Blasio for inciting anger and violence. That's why they killed the cops. What about all the cops who are killing people and you're the president and you're not doing anything about it? And that doesn't make it. He's complaining, blaming the mayor. But he's the president of the police and he's done nothing to set standards or set a program or curriculum to have them have training. So a lot more work needs to be done there. Yeah, he, yeah. you're getting kids out of high, high school, maybe a year. They don't know anything about it. And yeah. if, you, if you live in the city, you should, if you're going to be a police in the city, you should live in the city. You can't live in Suffolk County. Right. And then come into the city and call them animals. A lot, a lot to be done. Thank you so much, okay. Malak Shabazz, for joining us here on France 24. You've been watching the interview. Stay tuned. There's more news coming up. Yeah, but it's